Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting little knife right here. This is the Kaiser Damasteel Minitherium. So, um, first off, though, uh, full disclosure, this guy was sent to me directly from Kaiser Knives. They uh, contacted me, said, hey, Nick, you want to check one of these out? I said, oh, yes, I do. Um, and I, But I told him, as always, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be a gem, might be junk. They still sent it along, but um, there you go. Full disclosure, we do have to assume this was the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever. But uh, nevertheless, there you go. Um, next thing, let's do a size comparison real quick. Um, here it is against your uh, spider. Spydeco PM2, your uh, Spydeco Delica, as always. And here it is against the um, Ontario Rat number two. And so what we can see here is that size-wise, this is actually not a small knife, although actually it kind of is. It's in a very weird intermediate place. In terms of the overall blade height, it's actually not far off from the PM2, which gives it a nice, tall, thin grind. But nevertheless, it is, uh, in terms of actual, you know, size in the pocket, it is not very large here. We can compare it to your Spydeco Delica. You can see in carry-wise, it's it's not a big one. So, um, there you go. Next thing, who is the designer? This is the Elijah Isham. You can see that just barely etched into the, um, into the damn steel there. Elijah Isham is a uh, crazy individual who I very much appreciate as a knife designer. He is uh, really hot right now. He's making designs for a bunch of different people. Um, and this is another one of his. I actually reviewed another the model of this exact knife, the regular Metatherium, a little while back, and uh, you know, I, th th this is though a very different model, even though it has the damaged steel blade. The other big difference is that this is a bolster lock version rather than being a uh, liner lock as the original uh, Metatherium was. I've also reviewed the Megatherium, which is the big brother of this little guy, and uh, you know, that's a whole different beast itself, and it is a beast indeed. So there we go, and because this is very much a new knife, being a titanium bolster lock, being the damaged steel. I'm going to go ahead and treat it as such and uh, do a full review. There may be a little bit of repetition from time to time, but there are enough differences that I feel like this deserves that. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of this very interesting little knife right here. Okay, so on the good side, by the way, I've been a little bit sick lately, so if I start coughing, that's uh, that, 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 that's just my lungs being freaking devious. That's that's the way it goes for me. Oh, yay. Anyways, I'm back at the ranch. I love the size of this knife. This is a very, very nice size. The reason I say that is two things. A, you get a tall enough blade here that you can get a very thin grind. We'll talk about that later. Um, B, it has enough beef to it to uh, really get most jobs done, and you can choke up here, which is very nice. Um, And it is also in the pocket not very big. I can throw this guy in the pocket and really not feel it that much. It's a little bit more uh, prominent than, for instance, the, uh, the the carbon fiber one because it's a little bit heavier. But this just works so well for carry. It, it just it carries very nicely. Um, and actually, part of the reason it carries so nicely is that it's got this clip on here, which actually helps it to carry nicely. It has a flipper tab that is very much out of the way here. This actually is, it's just, it's a really nice little piece. So um, that is absolutely great. Next thing, ergonomics are good. Um, you can choke up on this guy, works great. Um, you can stay back, and that works great too. The balance on it is just right on. Even though they have moved from the liner lock to the bolster lock, um, the, the balance on this guy is still just right on, which is great. Um, overall, ergonomically speaking, this is a solid, solid knife, and a, frankly, just a good knife for everyday carry. Next thing, this is reasonably well finished. The damage steel obviously looks good. Um, and you can see here that they've got, uh, you know, a, 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 it looks solid. Um, this guy has actually had some carry, so there's like a little scratch right there. Um, so, you know, that's that's life, unfortunately, but they can't put that on Kaiser. But overall, it's pretty well built. It's well put together. They, they got no real complaints there. Uh, next thing, the action on this guy. Um, this is a reliable action. What I mean by that is that most of the time you pull the tab here, it deploys, uh, you know, and that, that that's good. You can also flick this guy out, and that works quite well as well. Um, either index or middle finger, depending on how you want to. Uh, not quite there. There we go. Um, and it is also thumbable because the detent on this guy is much lighter. You are able to do that. I have to say the detent on this guy is not as good as the one I had in carbon fiber, the, the original mini theory, but it is still there and it does still work. It's not a... It's not a good detent, but it's not a bad detent either. It is right on that edge. So, th th that said, though, the action is reliable, and it is, by the way, still a relatively smooth knife. So, um, th th we'll talk about that later, but um, nevertheless, it does open reliably, and I think this is just variance from piece to piece. Then finally, on the good side, this has a Stella blade. This was the thing I loved most about the original one and uh, the original Metatherium there, and it is the thing I, well, it's almost the thing I love most here. This is a very tall blade with a very thin grind. If we look at this guy behind the edge, 
it is really, really freaking thin behind the edge. That is great. Um, this is just a knife, and it's got this kind of a worn, cliffy, sheep's footy thing um, that is just good for everyday carry. It's good for just as a generalized tool. It is very, very slicey, and it is using here a Damasteel brand Damascus um, steel. Uh, the only kind of a uh, patent welded Damascus style, whatever the heck you want to call it. Look, the only other knife I have at the moment that has the Damasteel is this little guy from Millet Knives, but I'm a big fan of Damasteel's work. You definitely Definitely, it's not quite the same edge retention as some of your higher-end, well-done, well-treated M390s and things like that. But you know what? It works very well for everyday carry, and it sharpens up and it strops so nicely. Damas steel plus a strop means crazy, sticky, sharp edges that I love. And so I have to say, this is a great blade. This remains a great blade. And the damas steel on it does look very good. So um, to me, at least, all that is the good. It has a very, very nice, slicey blade. It has a good action, a good clip, good finish. Solid ergos, and I do love the size. On the great side to me, honestly, I feel like this design, the, the, the bolster lock with the damage steel and whatnot, really feels like this design is allowed to shine. The original one, the, the carbon fiber mid-Ethereum, that is, at some level felt like an amorphous black mass. I mean, the carbon fiber was attractive, certainly, but a lot of the lines were lost in it. A lot of the swoopiness, a lot... This knife right here feels like a prop out of a sci-fi movie. You take this out and people are like, oh my God, what is that? I mean, yeah, I guess it's a pocket knife, but it's just completely out of, it's it's crazy. And that's the thing that Elijah Isham offers. And by the way, blue backspace are on there. Nice. Good finishing and whatnot. Um, but this is the thing that Elijah Isham offers in spades is his designs are weird and weird in the very best of ways very often. I love his work and this is probably the piece of his that I like more than... Oh, can I say that? Yeah, probably. I think this is probably my favorite design that he's done. It's just really, really cool. I am, I freely admit, kind of in love with the aesthetics of this particular knife. Um, And, you know, it is purely aesthetic. And if you are a functional sort of person, the blade is what is great here. But to me, at least, you know, design is personal. But this is a hell yes, I'm picking up what you're putting down sort of knife. I just love the look of this guy. and It, it just feels so weirdly science fiction-y. It's just great. And so to me, that's what's great here is I feel like this new design, coupled with this beautiful damas steel pattern here, which I should just show off a little bit there. You can see there's a nice reflective polish here on this. Um, it, it, it is just an absolutely beautiful sort of thing. And that coupled with the bolster lock, coupled with the other lines with the clip, just allow this guy to really shine. And so to me, I find this to be an eminently beautiful knife. And that to me is what's great. On the bad side, um, like I said about the last one, it remains a little bit wide in the pocket. It's not so bad relative to some of your other things in your life. I mean, again, put our next to pair of two here. We are, uh, it's about the same width, but it just feels a little different. Pardon me. <coughs> ah, damn, I'm healthy. Anyways, um, it remains a little bit wide. It is also a little bit heavier than the mid-Ethereum in the carbon fiber. I mean, this makes sense. When you replace a bunch of carbon fiber with a bunch of titanium, it gets heavier. Uh, but we're looking here at 3.43 uh, ounces, uh, as opposed to the original one, which was just under 3 ounces. Um, this goes over the ounce and inch line, but it's not onerous particularly. And by the way, I'll measure up the blade length here because I haven't done that yet. We are coming in under 3 inches, which is another pro, by the way, for many people in many areas. On the bad side, um, also, uh, that god, they could have put a couple fewer screws in this guy. I mean, I, I get it at some level, but I really kind of wish that it was just like this screw and this screw. That would just have been more attractive, and particularly this one in the holding down the inlay. It's not one you'll ever need to take out that I, uh, well... Actually, I'm not remembering that. Watch my disassembly. It's been a little while since I did that one. Um, but at the same time, I really kind of do wish that this screw wasn't there because it just breaks up this otherwise beautiful line. I, I, I wish they'd knock that down a little bit, and I hope that in the future they manage design with a little bit less visible hardware here. Um, next thing, on the damage steel itself here, there were some areas, and by the way, you're seeing like little bits of... I tried to clean this guy off, but uh, some, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been carrying this guy a lot. Um, but there are some little areas where it feels like the pattern disappears for a moment. Like right in here, right in here. Um, where it just, it feels like the, the continuousness of the pattern is broken up. This is actually uh, not something I can write there as a good one. Um, maybe not good, but nevertheless, this is not something that is, uh, you know, great. It kind of, it, uh, for a second there, I thought, oh, maybe they missed the etch right there or something like that. But then I actually looked on Damasteel's website and for this pattern, the, uh, I believe this is Odin, Odenheim, um, they, they, they had this same issue on some of the, the, the ones they were showing off on their website. 
So I'm assuming this isn't just a Kaiser issue. This is instead just a, a damn steel issue. And, you know, hey, whatever, not a huge deal. Um, then finally, on the bad side, um, the price on this guy is a bit high. We're at 330 bucks. That's 130 bucks higher than the original um, carbon fiber one, which I appears to have gone up a little bit, which I'm not super in love with, but whatever. Um, the original was 200 as of right now, and this one is 330 as of right now. Now, look, this is a price that I could very easily see, given the titanium, the damn steel, and frankly, the fact they're not going to sell a billion of these. But at that kind of a price point, they need to be getting everything right. And unfortunately, that brings us to the ugly. So uh, wrapping up the bad, the price on this guy is fine, um, but they do need to get everything right. Um, there are some areas where, where the pattern is missing in the damage steel. Whatever, not a huge deal. I do wish they'd skipped a couple of these screws in here. Um, it is a little heavier than the Mini and the, the, than the original Metatherium that is, and it remains a little wide in the pocket, but not so bad. On the ugly front, they need to be more consistent on the detent, frankly, just generally at Kaiser, but in these price points specifically. Um, I actually handled a buddy of mine, um, Nehemiah, over at Metal Effort Channel. Good guy. Um, I actually handled his Minitherium, and the detent on it was much weaker than the one that I had. Um, and this one, unfortunately, is along those lines as well. This this detent here is it works. It is functional, but for me at least, it's kind of just barely over the line. Um, I'm missing in practical everyday life maybe one in ten flips, maybe one in fifteen. Um, just because it is actually quite possible to miss a flip on this guy. Um, and if you don't exactly, and that was on purpose, by the way. But if you don't hit it quite right, or if you kind of it's you can do that and especially if you're trying to flick this guy out i'm giving it a fair amount of risk just to make it work and i feel like kaiser just needs to work on detent consistency that is one thing that we knives one of their main competitors is really getting right this is a uh, we knives oh god what the heck's the number of this thing either way it's a we knife um uh, oh man. It's one that's named a number, which is even more brutal. But anyways, the Wii Knives gets their detents always 100% of the time right, at least in my experience, and Kaiser is a lot more variance. And you know what? Okay, if you're at 150 bucks, a bit of variance can get shrugged off. But if you're going to start selling knives for 330 bucks, you need to get those detents dialed right in. And the fact that this guy, which should be one of their sort of halo models, and I think it really is, um, if the detent on this guy were as good as the original, I'd be way more over the moon with this guy. I, I, I admit I'm still smitten as it is, but that was really a disappointment to me. And so the ugly thing here is that this detent is not great, and I really would like to see them become more consistent in their detents just throughout their product line, but especially if you're going to be selling on the super high end like this guy. So to me, that's the ugly, is that the, uh, ah, pardon me, <coughs> Ooh. The, uh, the detent on this guy does need a little bit of love, a little bit of work. Final conclusion front. Look, the um, carbon fiber mini Ethereum was a shining gem. There was very little wrong with it in practice, everyday life, and it is, frankly, a great design. And in fact, I, I, but one thing I noticed is a lot of folks found it kind of incongruous that it never ended up in my pocket, particularly in my personal collection for any length of time. People would say things to me like, Nick, you loved it. There were almost no problems. Why didn't you keep it and love it forever and call it George? Um, this knife actually showed me why I didn't love the original one that much. I mean, in many ways, like I said, the all black carbon fiber handle with the silver blade hid, I think, some of the awesomeness of this design. The lines on it were harder to see. You know, this guy has, the original had all of this sculpting going on here, but because it was all a part of the gray carbon fiber, it kind of all melded together a little bit. Um, and it, it was a little off the beaten path in terms of design, but it didn't feel quite as woe as some of Elijah's work, and from a distance, it almost looked like it could be another, you know, black FRN sort of handle sort of thing. Not saying it was a bad knife by any stretch, but it just never quite got the extra mile artistically. This knife, however, with these upgrades, does uh, it allows the design to shine. It takes it out of massive carbon fiber and into titanium. Now, the lines are being highlighted, and the knife is allowed to be the crazy thing that it always was. This is an absolutely astoundingly pretty knife, in my estimation. It really does feel like a prop from a sci-fi movie. Whether that's a cheesy movie or not, I really don't care. I think it is a really, really cool-looking piece. And it remains a nice piece in a lot of other functional ways. It's got Got good ergos, a nice blade, nice size, great carryability. But now it is allowed to be one of the vaguely crazy things that Elijah Isham seems to specialize in. I go to him when I want something a little weird, and now this is a lot more weird than the original one was. And coupled with this damage steel here, 
which is really nice. This is a knife that I really like and that has been very easy to drop into my pocket. I have carried this guy way more than I needed to for the review, and in fact, I've been dragging my feet on filming this because I wanted to keep carrying it, but instead, I'm just going to keep it and carry it when I want to. But anyways, I, dis I digress. Um, unfortunately, though, it is not perfect. Um, it is a little bit heavier than the original. Whatever. That's adding titanium. It has some extra screws here. It is um, substantially more expensive than the carbon fiber version, and it's got this detent that is just sort of barely over the line. It works, but it's not great. And, you know, when you almost double the price, buyers almost double their expectations, and so as a result, actually, I'm a little bit more torn on this guy. This is a great knife. It is going to be a part of my collection, and it's one that I really appreciate. It's one that I've been grabbing on a regular basis because, honestly, they're doing great work here. But, it, and I think as a design piece, I, I, it's it's absolutely great. Um, there, there, there is so much to love here. However, at 330 bucks, it's a little hard to recommend, especially when an incredible action isn't guaranteed. There is a lot of competition at 330 bucks, even in your Dama Steel, even in your higher-end stuff, that I, I really hope that Kaiser in the future really dials in these higher-end models more. So personally, I think this is a great knife. And even with this detent, I would say it is still a gem. It's a great little piece, and this allows it to shine. The design element is cranked way up, um, and it, with a perfect detent, I would be screaming from the rooftops about this guy. People would think I was even more insane than a guy sitting here reviewing a Batman mask or reviewing wearing a Batman mask would look. But look, I, I, I really, really like this guy. But that said, at 330 bucks, it's really a much bigger decision. And so is this a great knife for you? I know the answer in uh, Minute Theory, but I think only you'll know in Minute Practice. Eh? Okay, anyways, there you go. I hope you found this interesting, that you will find the price a real damn a steal. Eh? Okay, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.